Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. Today, we have with us um, on our show, Mrs., or I should say, Dr. Kimberly Harms. Dr. Harms, say good morning. Good morning. Hey, Thank you for having me. We're great, grateful to have you here. You have such an interesting background. Um, and you know what you do in your area of expertise is, I think our audience is going to find um, great for what, for what they're trying to do today, which is learn more how to better their practice and better themselves. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me kind of how you got into dentistry, how you got in the industry, and, and how you got to where you're at now. Well, I got into dentistry, uh, unfortunately, back in 1974, when things were a little bit different. Uh, There were very few women. In fact, I never heard of a woman dentist at the time. And there was this really cute guy named Jim Harms who wanted to be a dentist. And so I thought that maybe if I went into dentistry, um, you know, I'd have a good job and he'd marry me. So that is how I got into dentistry. Uh, Of course, please do not follow my lead, but that's the truth. (laughs) But I love dentistry. It's been the best profession ever. I've worked very hard. I was the first woman president of the Minnesota Dental Association. I, um, I, it is absolutely the best profession, uh, men or women ever. And of course, U.S. News and World Report and other organizations have discovered that as well. So um, I'm not telling anyone something they don't already know. But that was how I got into it. And I graduated from, ended up graduating, uh, walking down that uh, uh, graduation uh, platform with my husband, Jim. We graduated together. So my plan worked. So that's, that's that's fantastic, true. and I, I know that you know you just mentioned it's a wonderful profession, amazing profession. I think some of the audience, and I know there's a lot of dentists out there uh, in general that probably would argue that with you. So, um, with that kind of leading into it, what what is it that you've done differently? Why do you see it as being just this amazing career, and as it is, what what is your perspective there? What what's different about you and your insight? Well, you know, when my husband and I were walking down that graduation platform back in 1981, which is probably before many people in your audience were even born, we thought that our success, our happiness, our success in practice would be based upon the clinical issues that we discovered as well as the business issues. What we didn't know, what we didn't realize is that things like death, depression, disability, despair would come into our lives as they do everyone's life. Right and affect them in a major way. And it, what we thought at the time was that was not really a big issue, but what I believe, and I think the, the, the key to my ability to look back on dentistry, which by the way, I, I, I'll tell you a little bit later, I did suffer disability, have, can't practice clinically anymore. So I, I suffered the loss of that profession a few years back. But what we didn't realize is how important our emotional management of our practice was. Because if, you're, if you can formulate your practice, if you can work your, your, your team together in a way that's emotionally healthy, practicing dentistry is absolutely wonderful. Most dentists my age will tell you that the biggest difficulties they faced were managing people. Sure. We don't get trained how to manage people. We don't get trained how to manage emotions. And I think managing emotional emergencies in the dental office, managing conflict needs to be part of our standard of care and needs to be included in our uh, policy and procedure manual uh, so that everybody knows how to do it and we can move ahead. And I think that's a biggest stressor in in dentistry. It's not really the clinical aspects, especially after you get the first five or 10 years, maybe, you know, you're just getting, you're getting used to doing things, but as you get older, it's not the clinical, it's the emotional issues uh, that cause despair and burnout. You you know, I think, I see this, you know, I work in a, I work with a couple of different professions in healthcare. I work with uh, my day-to-day job. I work with dentists, of course, and I also work with uh, plastic surgeons, ENTs. And frankly, the problems that they have are actually the same. Um, And any business owner that I know, and I know plenty of them outside of healthcare, pretty much all the problems are the same. So I think something that happens that business owners always think that the problems that they have are unique to their profession and their skill set, And it makes us feel isolated, right? So if you're, if you or myself, or, you know, and I, if I'm on a life raft by myself and I'm the only one out of the ocean, that's horrible. But you know what, if the rest of the planet is on the ocean and the life raft, 
you know, around me, it's a totally different perception of at least the feeling is very different. So I just want to kind of interject that because I'm seeing that a lot lately. And speaking of seeing things a lot lately, your ears to the ground, you're, you know, obviously, you know, I know you help in conflict, you help coaching, um, transitions. Um, what's going on out there? What are you hearing a lot of right now? What's the common problem that um, people are coming to you about? Well, certainly COVID threw us all for a loop. In fact, um, I did a seminar uh, on February 29th of last year uh, called Calamities and Catastrophes, and we talked about how to manage them in the office. And I did talk about AIDS, so at least I got, I got a pandemic in there. Little did we know that within this last year, we have been just torn up and thrown, you know, thrown up in the air. Our whole world has changed uh, in, in our personal lives. And all of those things that go on, in the, and certainly they were changing in dentistry, but all those things going on in the person, our personal lives are coming to the dental office. So we as a dental, as dental professionals are trying to manage the fear and the anxiety associated with COVID. And fortunately, I think we've done a great job. I, I give thanks to the ADA. I think they've managed this really well for us. So patients are becoming less afraid of going to the dentist. Sure. Uh, but all of those issues that are that are at home and our, I live in Minnesota and uh, the schools are just kind of starting to get back. Uh, and all of those times when our the hygienists, the assistants, the team members were coming into work and they were trying to figure out what their kids were going to do because they were being homeschooled. And if you know, sometimes I don't know about you, but I've had kids and they don't always do what they're supposed to do when they're left alone. And so they're worried about yeah. what's happening at home and if their husband's going to have a job and if they're going to be able to pay uh, the rent on their homes this month because you know their salaries have uh, you know, gone down a little bit maybe because of the, the unemployment issues for those three months. They were also worried in the beginning that they might come down with this horrible disease that you know, may kill them. And uh, so all of these things that they have at home, all the issues, that all that your emotional makeup shows up with you at the dental office. But when you get to the dental office, you, you have to be happy. If you walk into the dental office and you're doom and gloom and unhappy or angry or mad, those patients that are already nervous because they're in the dental office, are going to pick that up. Yeah. And so you, we have to, in our offices, uh, kind of get ourselves together in the morning and get everybody calm and get everybody as happy as they can be and go and take care of the needs of the patients. Look care, look for the needs of the patients. Kind of try to stop thinking about ourselves for a little bit. Look sure. for the patients. Now, one thing that's nice is you can, you know, patient comes in and go, oh my gosh, my kids are at home. I don't know what, and you can, you know, really? you can, me too. You know, you can yeah. say, yeah, I'm going through that as well. That's a, that's an appropriate way to manage that. But we have to be able to manage the emotional levels that are occurring in our offices, the happiness levels, um, and get rid of the conflict because a patient who's already anxious, because they're going to 80% of patients are anxious about going to the dentist. They're showing up at the dentist, they're already anxious, and they can pick up in a second any conflict or concern or you know, anxiety that we are feeling. So we have a very difficult job in this regard, and that we have to we have to go say, hello, good morning, come on in. And, and, you know, we're confident about our day and we're confident about what we're going to do for you. And we're happy. That's a hard thing to do when you have a lot of issues going on at home. So that's yeah. the biggest, challenge. but it's a challenge. And it's a challenge in medicine. It's a challenge really in almost any industry. Sure. Yeah. I think a lot of them facing it. I, there's it's, it's common. And I think when we know that other people are facing it again, kind of like that, that boat, it, it makes it so much easier. So um, I want to, kind of jump ship a little bit and you have a couple of books correct yes yeah yes. tell us about those books um I, I know there's at least two of them maybe more but tell me about them well there's two and i'm getting, writing another one called death depression disability and dentistry so i'm all i talk about all these uppers you know i'm really right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tough, really great topics you, you have such a big smile on your face and you are so <laughs> and then you mentioned this title it's it doesn't seem right but go ahead yeah, but I've, I've been there been there at yeah. all these areas. But um, so we, I, I started, I actually re retired from dentistry, not because I wanted to, but because I developed a radiculopathy, a nerve damage in my neck that affected my drilling fingers. So I was, I was working full-time one day, went to Mayo Clinic and said, can you help me with my neck? And they said, you were done. You cannot practice the wow. damage in your drilling fingers. And I was done practicing forever, which was horrible. So all of you that are out there practicing and concerned about it, just be thankful. You have, you can, you have a skill and a job and you could do something. It's, I, it's a, with a horrible loss. Um, and so I was home and I was going to, you know, I was going to kind of retire. My husband was still working. So I was going to retire. And I kind of did that. I, I had six grandchildren. So yay, I had fun with that. And all of a sudden, a couple of years back, my, my daughter decided she had, uh, she's a lawyer. I wanted my children to go into dental school, but they did not. They went into law instead. 
Okay. And um, but I got it back. She became a dental attorney. She 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 deals with dental transitions because she she managed ours, my transition, and she thought it was really better than family law because in family law there are children involved, and she thought this you know, managing transitions was. Uh, much better than doing family law because there are no children involved. Sure. And, uh, but she does. Hopefully. hopefully yeah. Hopefully. hopefully yeah. Yeah. Children. Some childlike people, but hopefully no children, but she loves it and she's extremely yeah. good at it. And she said, Hey mom, can you come and help me? Because I, you know, I'd like to have a consultant. And I, she felt the need for mediation that there were many, many offices. There was just, there was conflict going on and they just needed a third party to kind of get in there. They didn't need an attorney to come in. They needed like a grandma to come in and kind of help them work things out. So I started working for her a couple of years back and I've been having a ball. It's been so much fun. Uh, so I go into offices and I just help them when they have an issue or a problem. I come in as a mediator and I just say, okay, now what is going on over here? Let's work that out. Let's work this out. And, 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 and then I help them develop one of the books is called Neutralize Your Nightmare how to resolve conflict using a structured conflict management. So what I want to do, my goal is to get every office to have conflict managers in their office, not the doctor. Typically, it, sometimes it has to be because there's no, no person in the office with smaller offices that can do it, but have to have some conflict management procedures in their office. So when something happens, you know, typically in a dental office, something will happen, uh, say a, a, a one of the team members is going to have to work a day she doesn't want to work. Let's just use that as an example. It's pretty common. So she gets upset by that. Then she goes back to the sterilization room, which is like the water cooler everywhere else. It goes to the sterilization room and she starts to stir the pot because she's angry. And so another, another dental assistant hygienist who had a perfectly happy day going comes in and jumps into the pot. You know, and yeah. then another one and another one, they go out to lunch and they come back and everybody's angry. And the dentist is going, what, what, <laughs> what happened? Right. It happens all the time. It just, we're humans. That's, you know, it's, that's what happens. So I try to get to, to uh, have offices developed programs where when somebody's upset with something, they have a place to go either to the dentist mm -hmm. or to a conflict management uh, person, like what maybe a designate a trusted person within the team to say, Hey, you know, I'm really, this is really bothering me. Can you help me solve through that, work through that? And come up with an answer. Start when talk about conflict in a way that suggests a, a, a resolution to the conflict instead of making it simmer and boil and bringing everybody in, you know, and uh, so that everybody's in the pot. Take care of it immediately and build trust immediately within the, within the members of the team. So that's my first one, uh, and the second one is emotional emergencies in the dental office. And I I really again believe that man how you manage emotional emergencies and I call anything that disrupts the patient care because of emotions. If, if somebody's upset with you know, conflict is an emotional emergency. If somebody comes in and they've just had lost somebody in their, in their family, if they've sometimes uh, there's some, something going on within their home. If you have teenagers, you know, if you have oh, yeah. teenagers, they come in, how do you manage those in the office so that you can take care of them in a way that's safe for the team member, but does not disrupt that happy, wonderful feeling that that patient gets when they walk in that door and they see the team coming together to take care of them. So, right. Yeah, it's a, that show time and it's so important. That's some really great advice. And I know we, we touched about this and we're, we're kind of running out of time. We touched about it before um, we started recording. You know, right now, staffing, a lot, of, a lot of practices are struggling with this and it's very competitive. So, you know, resolving conflict, obviously, right now is probably more important than it ever was because trying to find someone, if you have a couple of team members, you know, blow out. It's going to be very, very difficult. Dr. Harms, I... Thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it very much. Um, I want to encourage our users. I'm going to list both websites because I know the books are listed on drkimberlyharms.com and then um, Transitions Coaching Consulting. Um, I'm sorry, on Transitions, um, pinelakelaw.com. Um, you can find um, Dr. Harms in both of those places. Again, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. It's been terrific. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com, and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.